of the Almighty. Every battle that comes against you, you shall be stronger than the enemy behind. In the mighty name of Jesus. I decree that this anointing shall be carried even in your house. It shall be carried even in your house. Shall be carried even in your house. Shall be carried even in your house. In your house shall be full of the divine presence. Huh? Angels of healing. You are healed. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. I see the angels of the Lord everywhere. Right now, I see the angels of the Lord effecting supernatural healing. I see the angels of the Lord everywhere effecting supernatural healing. Let's look on what I'm calling the power of the seed. The power of the seed. The power of the seed. Now, I made a statement and I listened to the message and I heard it again that God runs the universe. Let me say the earth by the principle of seed and harvest. Everything called living, whether plants or animals, has been sustained and in continuity by reason of seed and harvest. Now, God did not have to create and to make man and to make each and every one of us the same process he made the first man, Adam. He just needed to create one man and put seed inside of him and tell the man, go multiply and fill the earth, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. Today, we are above 7 billion human beings on the face of the earth. The reason is, the power of the seed is still at work. When you see the world population, it should satisfy your question, whether seed works. Because he created one man, put seed inside of him, and the seed has been at work. That is why we have seven billion and above. So the seed is still at work. Tell your friend, the seed is still at work. Now look all the animals. All the animals of the field. He did not have to create every single one of them. He created the first one, put the seed and the animals have been increasing day by day. Look at all the vegetation. He did not have to create every one of them. Every single second, seed is succeeding somewhere. There is a seed of a banana that is falling somewhere that is germinating. Another one that is growing. The other one is about to produce. Because seed and harvest shall never cease. Seed time and harvest shall never cease. Genesis 8 verse 22. Anytime you wake up and find the sun rising from the east, that is Jesus has not come back yet. Know that seed and seed time and harvest is still in place. So anything that God is increasing, it is increasing because the seed and harvest is at work. Hallelujah. Please quickly let's read these scriptures. Then we say a few points. Then we pray. Go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Look at verse 6. Hallelujah. Now let's start from verse 1. Thy bread upon the waters. For thou shalt find it after many days. That means no matter how long. Seed does not die. Whatever that is put in the soil, you will actually find it. Whether now or later. Then he says, give a portion so that you may know the casting of bread is talking about giving. He says, give a portion to seven and also to eight. 
For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. That is to say you are giving can handle the evil that may come on the face of the earth in the time to come. Then he says, if the clouds be full of rain, they shall empty themselves upon the earth. And we were able to say and to see. Rain is nothing else than the water vapor that the water bodies have released. The ocean, the lake, the rivers. As the water evaporates, going upwards, little by little, little by little. Then it gathers in the skies. And upon the appropriate height. And according to the weight of the cloud. It can hold no water anymore. It begins to fall down as rain. So rain is actually generated from the earth. So until the clouds are full. Your clouds remain empty. You can have an empty cloud over you. So you are giving as a sign of water vapor going up. You are giving to seven. You are giving to eight. You are releasing vapor to the sky. Soon or later, the clouds will darken and be so heavy that they must rele release rain upon your ground. Are you saying an amen to that? If the clouds be full, they empty themselves upon the earth. Now go to verse 4. Now he that observed the wind shall not sow. Now if you are looking for the wind in this kingdom, that is like the signs. He shall not sow. And he that regarded the clouds shall not reap. So when it comes to kingdom giving, I do not consider the environmental happenings. Meteorological facts are irrelevant in this case. There is no wind coming. Yet I'm putting my seed in the ground. There is no cloud for me, yet I believe in the principle of seed and harvest. Because it is not driven by the weather. It is driven by the word of God. God said it. It will come to pass. He that observes the wind shall not sow. For example, you know in this country they are crying economy. It appears like getting money is becoming a challenge day by day. You must work extra harder than ever before for you to move financially forward. Even with the economic challenge that is not only in this country, you must keep on sowing without regarding the clouds. Are you saying an amen to that? Move on. In the morning, let's go now everyone. Let's go. In the morning, sow thy and in the evening, withhold not thine hand. Don't say, I gave last month. Don't say, I gave during the Apostle Mayanja's meeting. Don't say, I gave last year. Don't say, I gave last Sunday. In the morning, sow thy seeds. And in the evening, before the day is over, withhold not thine hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall alike good, be good, without considering the clouds. Without considering what is happening around. Are we saying an amen to that? Now go to Psalms 126. Psalms 126. We are talking about the power of the seed. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream. That is to say when you, God gives you a turnaround. It will be like you are coming from a dream. How many people have, ha have ever had a sweet dream? A sweet dream. I pray from today you'll have sweet dreams. There are people who normally have bad dreams. I declare from today you are not going to have bad dreams. May you have sweet dreams in Jesus' mighty name. I don't know whether you have ever woken up from a dream that you wished that the dream continued. Have you ever had a dream that you say, oh God, bring back the dream. One time, after watching a message, my first encounter with Bishop Edipo's ministry, I watched his message, the first one. Then I went to sleep. When I went to sleep, the man appeared to me, Bishop Edipo. He appeared to me and laid hands on me and spoke blessings. Then 
I went again to sleep. Before I would catch my sleep, the man appeared again, laid hands on me, and spoke blessings. Then I woke up. At that time, as I went to sleep, then the man appeared to me again. Wow. I prayed from today. Demons will not be appearing to you again and again. You shall not be afflicted again in Jesus' mighty name. Say a big amen. Say a better living amen. amen. Have you ever woken up from a dream that you wish that it continued? I told you recently that I had an encounter. For me, those are not empty dreams. I had an encounter again. I had Bishop Oedipo. I was carrying Bishop Oedipo in my car. When you carry somebody like Bishop Oedipo in a car, whether in the dream or in the reality, you are not the same. And also when you carry somebody like me in your car, whether in the dream or in the reality. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you saying an amen to that? Then I saw myself the same, same night, I saw myself in Dr. Copeland's house and we were eating together. You will not see yourself eating with terrible people. May you see yourself dining with the great. Now the two combined, when you say Bishop Edipo and you talk of Dr. Copeland, the world does not know what to say. Especially in the area of kingdom prosperity. Hallelujah. And I have no doubt to tell you we are connected to that grace. Oh, the way you are answering is like you don't believe it. We are connected to that grace. One time, you will be very soon. You will be the talk of this county and the talk of this country in Jesus' mighty name. I am talking of a kingdom businessman, a child of God, a businessman, trading and working with God, and yet you are having a command in the marketplace. May that be you in Jesus' mighty name. I don't like your amen today. Your amen should be better than that. Hallelujah. Who said you cannot become a kingdom millionaire? But at the root of kingdom prosperity there is kingdom giving let's remain at Psalms 126 let us remain at Psalm 126 you will be like somebody who has come from a dream that is sweet dream a dream that you say oh I wish the dream comes again your life is turning around you are coming from begging to lending are you saying an amen to that Look at verse 2. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathens, the Lord has done what? Great things for them. The Lord is turning your cries to rejoicing and laughter. All those that mocked you before, they will see the glory of God risen upon you. Look at verse 3. The Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we are, we are glad. Look at verse 4. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. That is a cry of help. Then the answer is, let's go. They that sow. Are you there? Let's see the power of the seed. They that sow in tears shall do what? Reap in joy. Verse 6. He that goeth forth weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtlessly come again with what? Rejoicing, bringing his sheep with him. So when somebody is saying, oh Lord, turn my captivity. That is to say, oh Lord, change my situation. God gives the answer. He that soweth seeds, even with pain, he will doubtlessly come back with rejoicing. The point of your turn around financially is the point of your seed sowing. There is no turn around without seed sowing. There is no turn around. Lord, turn again our captivity. Then he said, sow your seeds. Father, but I'm crying. I don't have, I am painful. I have very little. 
he that soweth, even weeping, he will doubtlessly come back with a harvest rejoicing. The only way to stop your cry is by sowing. Now they will come rejoicing. I hope you can hear that better. The only way to stop your cry, your financial cry, Father, why am I, why am I going through this? Why are situations so difficult to me? Why am I going through some financial crisis like this? Then he says, he that soweth, weeping, he shall doubtlessly come back with joy. I pray and I declare that your weeping shall be substituted with the joy and rejoicing because your situation is changing from now. Please write this about the power of the seed. Number one. Every seed is from God. Every seed is from God. Every seed is from God. You cannot make up your seed. You cannot create your own seed. Any seed that is not from God, then it is not genuine seed. God is the author of every seed. Whatever that has a future has a seed. Whatever that does not have a seed does not have a future. Does not have a future. Does not have a future. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10. Because he giveth seed to the sower. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10. God gives seed to the sower. When you say, I am a sower, then God will say, I am the source of your seeds and he will give you seeds. So none of us will ever say, I don't have what to sow. Are we together? 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10. Now he that ministereth, to minister there means to give. Now he that giveth seed to the sower hath or both gives bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. God is the source of all seeds. God gives you seeds. If you can sow the seeds, then the seed has the capacity to multiply. That is the next point. The seed has the capacity to multiply. That is, every seed is loaded with potential for multiplication. Write it, number two. Every seed is loaded with potential for multiplication. If you become a sower, God will give you the seed. When you sow the seed, the seed has the ability to multiply. You just need to say, I am a sower. Then God, God will give you what to sow. When you sow the seed, the seed has the ability to multiply. So whatever that is not multiplying in your life, listen to that. Whatever that is not multiplying in your life, it is an area you have not sown. It's an area you have not sown. And by the way, you can sow seed for anything. Literally for everything, for anything and for everything. I listened to Pastor Chris some time ago. Pastor Chris Oyakilome, a great man of God I respect. He was in Canada having a meeting. And then there was an attack on one side of his body. Too much so that he was considering going to the hospital in Canada. And then he said, once I am done with the meetings, I'll just go to the hospital. Then one day, a friend pastor, another man of God came to see him, to visit him. And while the man of God was fellowshipping with him, the Lord said to him, you know what? Give out that your Mercedes Benz, S class. The moment he gave out that car, and the man was standing out, was going out. 
by the time the man was disappearing, he says, the pain just disappeared like that. I know somebody will say, ah, what is a pain, a pain on the side compared to a Mercedes Benz? Now, this was his look of that issue. Maybe if he had gone to the hospital, the hospital would have put him quickly on surgery. And then as he's doing maybe surgery, there would occur something like complication. Most of the doctors will tell you that, uh, and, and that is uh, what I've seen with many people. When people go for surgery, most of the cases, they become more complicated. If we are going for this surgery because of this kind of a situation, and then by the time you're coming out, you have developed some multiple challenges. So he was saying, supposing I went to the hospital and I refused to give out the car, and then they put me in the hospital, do a surgery, it becomes complicated, I have now to start paying even for oxygen. I have seen people pay for oxygen. I have seen people pay to be assisted in the most simple general biological functions of any human being. So he said, the moment he gave the car, the pain disappeared. Giving, sowing, you can reap whatsoever. It is one of the most powerful things. Actually, if you want to live long, you must be a giver. Otherwise, anything can kill you. There is a giving you do. Even if you enter a car that is accident bound. I hope you are listening. That you are going to come out alive. Are you saying an amen to that? There is a kind of giving you can give. That no matter what challenge is on the face of the earth. You are exempted from it. I pray that our kingdom giving from today shall take us to a place where we cannot be molested by the forces of darkness in this world. So your seed can multiply. Only seed sown can multiply. So whatever that is not multiplying in your life, it's an area that needs to be sown something. Any interaction with the United States any country that interacts with the United States of America, America will always post on the giving side. On the giving side. The relationship between America and Israel, because Israel does not need Misada Yachakula. Any time any country tries to attack Israel, America comes and says, you don't have to fight. You know that is what they have been doing? Any, any country that provokes Israel, America comes and says, you don't have to fight it. We are going to fight for you. We are going to fight for you. We are going to fight for you. The other day, you know, this man, was it, uh, who is this? Who was fighting Kuwait? Is it Saddam Hussein? Yeah, I think it is Saddam Hussein. Iraq was fighting Kuwait. And then America came and said, Kuwait, you don't have to fight. We are going to fight for you. I know you don't, you don't have need of food like in Africa. We may not have donations. We may not give donations to you like this. But you are going to give in another form. That's why America is always super. It's always super. How much have we received in this continent of Africa and specifically Kenya from America? You may want to wish them out and away. But they are going nowhere. America remains a big voice. Politically, economically, socially, everywhere. Why? Without all contradiction, the less is blessed by the better. I was so glad during the time of Kibaki when Japan was hit by an earthquake and many people died. Then for the very first time in the history of this country, Kenya was able to donate Clap your hands for President, uh, the former President Kibaki. <laughs> he organized one million US dollars as a donation for Japan. Clap your hands.
friends once again. I wish we can do more of that. When you become a continuous, persistent receiver, forever eternal receiver, you have declared yourself a very small person. When you declare yourself forever a giver, and the giving is not even about how much. Any interaction with me, it is me giving. When we meet, oh, let us meet somewhere for something, for fellowship. Then I am the one quick to pay for hotel bills, for tea, for coffee. So any human interaction, see yourself as a giver, not as a receiver. Wow, I believe, my dear viewer, you've been blessed by this program that is lighting your world, that is coming to you on this channel. This program, remember, it comes to you every Friday, that is 8.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. I'm Bishop Patrick Karyuki of Great Gospel Visionaries International. I would like to pray with somebody who says, I am not born again. I want to give my life to Jesus. Or somebody who backslid. Or somebody who is not very certain or sure about his salvation. This is your time for salvation. This will guarantee the kingdom life here on earth. And also eternity with Christ in the time to come. So wherever you are, you don't have to wait until Sunday. You don't have to consult with your friends. Because this is a matter between you and Christ Jesus. If you believe, he will come into your heart. And he will make you his son. If you believe in your heart and confess, you shall be saved. Whatever you are, please, meaningfully, from the depth of your heart, it doesn't matter where you are, you will pray together with me, and Jesus will become the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, today I make this decision to receive you as Lord and my Savior. Forgive my sins and my wrongs. Write my name in the book of life. I confess that you are my savior. And I receive of your love. And by faith, by the grace of God, I confess I'm born again. The past is gone and the new has come. I am born again. Amen. Congratulations. You just made it to the kingdom of God. Now you're a son of God. You're a child of God. Men and women alike, you're not born again. If you've made that decision, you made that prayer, Indeed, there's no doubt that you're born again. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, nothing.